Hi, I'm Betsy, and this is my helper, Ellie. We just bought a 2018 Ram Promaster 1500 cargo van. We plan to convert it to a camper van for fun getaways and adventures. Come along with us on this journey. Well, you know, when you start a project, you're planning so much and you have all this time and then you get toward the end where you want it to be done and you forget to do things. I forgot to videotape a ton of things on the cabinets, but I got a lot of good tips to share with you. So what I want to do on this video is start with the finished product, what the upper cabinets look like, and then go through some of the tools and the tricks that I learned and that I used. And hopefully it'll help you, but it's a little disjointed, but it came out great. It's a bit of a learning curve with the cabinets, but I think they came out very nice. I'm, I'm happy with them. These right here are actually held up by using two by twos that are put into the rib of the van using plus nuts and hex bolts. And then I use the Craig jig so that I could screw the side into here. Only be I had to do it that way because I couldn't get to it here. It was too, it, it's, I just wouldn't be able to get the drill in there. But I did use some screws on the outside to put things together. So this two by four is held on again to the rib of the van with plus nuts and hex bolts and then this using a Craig jig is attached to the back 2x4 and then this is held on by this and by this so as long as you have a sturdy base with 2x4s and 2x2s then everything else can can come together. So this is our closet, uh, if you will, for the bedroom. And I just have a thin piece of, I think maybe a quarter inch plywood because the clothes don't weigh a lot. And Betsy has a fabulous system of using magazine folders. She just cut down the top so they'd fit in there. And that's where we keep all of our clothes. Uh, we're not traveling right now, so we took everything out. But they just go in there, and we have plexiglass doors that keep it all nice and nice and tidy. There are, I think they're 3 8 inch aluminum tracks that you can get at Lowe's or Home Depot. Super easy to cut with a little hacksaw. And the quarter inch plexiglass just goes right in them. So that's the, the closet. This thing underneath, um, I just set this up to hold the reflector that covers the windshield and the front windows. This back here, I call it the magazine rack, I, only because it looks like one, but that's where we keep our computers, um, pajamas, just extra things. And we have a, a USB port that's also run off, uh, that runs off the battery where we can charge our phones and this was created so that if, if we sit up in bed you're not going to hit your head because it's angled but it's a lot of really nice extra storage space. Here's the kitchen cabinet and same concept Two by twos are affixed to the van using plus nuts. I actually think behind here, I can't remember, but I think behind here I put a piece of a poplar and then I screwed this into the poplar uh, just because the walls are so weird and I needed this board to come out some. So again, as long as you have a really strong foundation with things going into the 
the um, van wall using plus nuts, I then would get this to the right length. That then screws into this piece. And so this is attached by right here, down here, and also up here. So I've got three points of contact to hold this board up. Then this whole frame right here is attached to give it some additional stability with this piece going into it. So this piece, this is like a jigsaw puzzle. Okay, these three pieces are holding on this piece. This is screwed into this piece. This is screwed into this piece. So it sounds sort of crazy, but as long as you've got a good foundation, it is solid, solid, solid as can be. And then I've just got, I believe I put quarter inch plywood under here just because the cans are pretty heavy and I wanted to give it some strength. Same deal, plexiglass um, doors in a 3 8 inch aluminum track. And then I put some of that, you know, that kind of stuff you put under a rug so it doesn't move when you walk on it. I put this on the bottom here so that the cans and boxes would stay still and everything stays really in place. This is that plastic sheet I got from um, Lowe's, the 4x8 sheet. I just cut it up to use here because it's nice. It holds the insulation in place. It's easy to clean. It's white and reflective. Um, I used it over here. I used it back here. So it, it's worked out well. Over on this side, again, same concept. I've got, you know, my attachment points. I've got three contact points here, here, and down here. So that's holding this piece on. Same deal. You know, it's like the, sort of like that song, the hip bones connected to the ankle bone, or that wouldn't be right. Whatever that song is. Everything is connected to everything else. And it just gives a good, good solid uh, foundation. Because it is tough to figure out how in the world to make things work with these walls because they're so angled and but this is this thing's not going anywhere as solid as can be it has worked great this thing is fabulous because it gives us so much extra room it's easy to just throw iPads and phones up there and the closet the only thing Betsy wishes I had done with the closet is made it a little bit deeper just to be able to put a few more things in um, but my goal was I was trying to keep it so we wouldn't be running into it because the way we get into bed is step up on the stool seat and then crawl into bed and you really don't want to bonk your head which is also why I curved this um, so it works well but I guess if we had it to do over again would have made that maybe an inch deeper but it works fine We finally have some decent weather today so that I can work on the van a little bit. And I just want to show you about plus nuts. This was a very confusing topic for me. And so after doing some research, I think I sort of understand it. I got these from JC Sales and Rivet. And I looked on Amazon, all sorts of different things. Some people use stainless steel. I don't know what these are, but they're working fine for me right now. So, they have the thread down this bottom part. This right here is 
pre-bulbed so you see how it sort of flares out there are others that are straight they're not pre-bulbed and they're more for applications where there's machinery that can pull it because to get these things to splay out the way they need to it's it's uh, easier for the DIY to use them with the pre-bulbed so the tool that I'm using is the Astro 1450 and there are different ways that you're told to do it and here's what's working for me this is a 5 16 18 pre-bulbed plus nut so I have one that's installed here so you can see the bolt just goes right in threads right in there so that will hold my boards in place so these particular hex holes right here I think they're for metrics they actually work well for getting these into them let me show you how I do it because it tends to bounce around when I hit it with the mallet I just put some masking tape over it to hold it in place so I pushed it through it sticks out a little bit but it usually takes three hits to get it in this will be four five okay so at this point it's in there and then I take the Astro 1450 right here this one has a longer mandrel for the plus nuts I believe the riv nuts are shorter so this one has an extended shank the Astro 1450 you spread it apart a little bit and you just turn it so you're catching the threads at the end of the nut and it'll snug up to it And then you just squeeze it and you just have to keep working it in and you'll feel it when it's done it gives resistance still working it in I think it's almost there yeah okay just unscrew it And then you have a nice secure spot to put in a bolt, a carriage bolt. So here's 5 16 18 carriage bolt. It screws right in. So at that point, I'll have boards with the holes drilled in. And I'll show you how I lined up the holes. That was a bit of an interesting trick. So I have all the plus nuts in. The tricky thing is, is trying to figure out where the heck these things are so that I can drill the holes in the board so what I what's working for me is to take a piece of masking tape and just take a pencil to indicate where this hole is on the tape so that when I put it on the board oops, precision is not my forte but when I put it on the board I'll be able to line it up correctly so I put the masking tape on the piece of poplar here and I know when I had it in the van it was a little crooked so what I did is I measured from the floor up to find the center hole of the riv nut in the van and this one and this one are at the same height they're a little bit higher than these two so what I did is I just measured up uh, from where I need this to end up at 
uh, 33 inches from the floor up. So then I figured out how much room I needed or where was the middle of that hole. So I drew a line there and then I just lined it up so the middle went right through that line and then I'm going to drill right through the holes there. So uh, I'm using a quarter inch 20 bolt and since I tend not to be precise I'm using a uh, the next size up, what is that, 5 sixteenths. Um, and then I'm just going right in the middle here. The Craig Jig is the most wonderful thing in the world. I've got the super cheap kit that you take this bit. And it's got a little stop. And you can, you put the tip in here, you set it, you take this little allen wrench and you move the stop to however thick the wood is then you drill in and then you have these uh, square head screws that you use to um, you use this to get them down in this little hole and so it's, this thing is just amazing so this is half inch plywood so I am making screw holes with the Craig jig and the way you do it is also in the little jig you set it to where it's a I put it for three quarter inch uh, just to make it a little thicker with the wood and it has a little stop right there so you line it up on the wood you clamp it down so it's flush at the bottom, and then you just take the drill bit. Okay, that's exciting one-handed. Um, so you can normally you can drill two holes in, but I'm just spacing them out. And then you have your little hole. So what I'm doing, this is the frame for the headboard. So I'm getting my pieces set up. And since the screws sort of go back when you screw them in, I want the screw heads this way so it'll grab into the wood. So here's one of the here's one of the screws right there. I just was experimenting to see how it's a little square head. But the Craig jig is a fabulous tool. I've just primed some boards that I'm putting back up there, the support behind uh, the kitchen cabinet. You can see I have plus nuts in there for holding the boards for support. This plastic, it's a wall panel, it was a 4 by 8 sheet from Lowe's that I'm using, uh, for example, right there. It covers the wool nicely, holds it in place, and it looks nice, and it's clean, and it's white. I have put together the first cabinet. Um, we're still trying to figure out what we'll do with the ceiling. And I may regret having done this first, but we'll figure it out as we go along. But the, the thing I did do with this is that everything is put together with screws. So I can take it down and put it back up. Nothing is glued at this point. So I have flexibility. Um, what I did first was did a cardboard template for the side here. And then I used a little bit heavier. I don't know what this stuff is, but it's a little bit heavier. And then just sand it a bit and then tried to match it as best I could. Um, we did not do flat wall panels like some people do. We're going to uh, cover the black plastic panels that came with the van, so we've taken them off. There's our wool insulation. Uh, we'll cover those and then I'll put them back up. These are my mock-up cardboard doors because they're going to be sliders. So I found this really good plastic coat um, wall panel from Lowe's. It was a 4 by 8 foot sheet. Cuts really easily. 
we'll be painting these white so it looks it looks nicer and then we'll be painting the cabinets but then I also used uh, I believe it's a quarter inch aluminum track that the doors will slide in I used the Craig screws to attach the frame so the frame is poplar um, and use the Craig screws to affix this piece so I could screw it into the side piece. Again, nothing is glued or anything so I can take it all apart. And then up top, I left the tracks so that I can lift them up to get the doors in and then push them back down so there's a slot. Oops, there's a slot that they sit in. So what we're trying to do right now is figure out how we want the the panels to go and how I need to cut them. So obviously it's an experiment because I've already taped together. We thought we wanted three slots and decided we wanted two. Over here, this is a piece of poplar, which is a nice strong wood that is affixed to the um, rib along the... Um, van and so I'll be cutting a piece out to fit in here and I'll screw it into here that'll be covered with whatever fabric we choose so it'll look nice uh, right now it's rather unfinished looking but I'm using plus nuts to affix things so you see I have some in here and this is a 5 16 18 plus nut I'm also using quarter 20 I can get them up into these holes, the one quarter inch 20. I'm just trying to dry fit everything. And I'm having to shave my side pieces down just a little bit because the ceiling's up now. So it's getting a good snug fit. So I'm just going to stain them and paint them. It's looking good. Thanks for watching. I hope this helps you with your project. 